In this lecture, I am going to answer these questions below. These questions are related to the topic moment of inertia. So first of all, I am going to discuss what is moment of inertia, then polar moment of inertia, and then discuss the reason why moment of inertia is sometimes called resistance to bending. And polar moment of inertia, on the other hand, is called resistance to twisting. And in the end of the lecture, I am going to drive a formula for the calculation of moment of inertia for rectangular section. Moment of inertia is purely a geometrical property. It does not depend upon loading conditions or support conditions. It is a cross-sectional property depending upon the geometry of the cross-section. So if I write moment of inertia Furthermore, moment of inertia is sometimes also called as the second moment of area. So if I take small area here and let's say the area of this element is dA and if I take second moment of area with respect to certain axis for this dA element then I would obtain the moment of inertia for this dA element. So let's try to calculate moment of inertia with respect to this axis. So I need to take uh, second moment of area uh, of this dA element with respect to this axis. So let's assume a perpendicular distance uh, from x axis as equal to y so first moment of area would be equal to and again if I take moment of this area with respect to this axis I'm going to obtain the moment of inertia so second moment of area is equal to y into y dA and this becomes y square dA so this second moment of area is basically your dIx into y square dA. So why the differential moment of inertia? Because we have differential element here. So this is basically the moment of inertia for this differential element with respect to this x-axis. And if you want moment of inertia for this whole plane area, then you just need to integrate this equation on both sides. So the left hand side becomes Ix and the right hand side becomes integral y square dA. So for continuous plane area such as this, you need to integrate all the dA elements and take the second moment of area with respect to that axis where you are trying to calculate moment of inertia. So this is for continuous plane area. Similarly if you want moment of inertia with respect to this y axis, then the perpendicular distance between this area and this dA element would be x. And you are going to follow the same procedure that we did for this axis. So let's do that. So first moment of area is equal to x into dA. So again take the second moment of area with respect to this axis. It yields. So this is equal to DIY equals to x square dA and if I integrate this equation on both sides IY is equal to integral x square dA. So these two equations, these generalized equations can be used to formulate the formula for different regular shapes such as rectangle, circle, triangle, etc. Uh, for instance, the moment of inertia for rectangle about this axis is equal to b h cube divided by 12 where b is this length and h is the depth of this rectangular section. So this formula here is derived using this generalized equation for the moment of inertia about x axis and we are going to see in the end of the lecture that how this formulation is derived using this general equation. So what would be the definition of moment of inertia? The moment of inertia is defined as the integral of the second moment about an axis of all the elements dA lying in that plane area. So this is how you can define moment of inertia. So you take the second moment of each and every dA element lying in this plane area 
with respect to a particular axis and then integrating it this would give you the moment of inertia for that particular axis the moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to plane xy and passing through the intersection of x and y axis is called polar moment of inertia so this is our xy plane here and x and y axis intersect at this point so if you calculate the moment of inertia about an axis which is perpendicular to this plane as well as passes through the intersection of x and y axis then the moment of inertia about this particular axis is called polar moment of inertia again assume a da element and the perpendicular distance with respect to x axis uh, is equal to y and consider this distance as x from y axis and let's call this as z axis and the perpendicular distance of this da element with respect to this axis let's name it as r so previously we calculated our ix and it was equal to integral of y square da and iy is equal to integral of x square da whereas iz or polar moment of inertia is also represented by j is equal to and we follow the same pattern this should be equal to r square da so for polar moment of inertia just square the perpendicular distance and take integral of all the d elements so let's try to find the relation between uh, this polar moment of inertia and these two moment of inertias so here we have a right angle triangle and if you apply Pythagoras theorem r square is equal to x square plus y square and if you substitute the value of r square from here this becomes x square plus y square into ta and if I further solve it integral y square da and this here if you observe it's equal to iy and this term over here is equal to ix so your j is basically equal to ix plus iy so if you know the moment of inertia about x-axis and y-axis you just need to add them up to get your polar moment of inertia so why moment of inertia is called resistance to bending whereas polar moment of inertia is called resistance to twisting so you might have heard of flexural classical flexural equation which is sigma is equal to my over i so if you haven't heard of it you are going to study it in subjects like uh, strength of material or mechanics of material one so for now just kind of focus on these two variables this is your stress and this is, your, this is your moment of inertia so this equation is basically used to calculate bending stresses or flexural stresses so it says that we can see here that the relation between stress and moment of inertia here is inversely proportional so it means that if I increase moment of inertia uh, if my cross-section is such that moment of inertia is increased then the stress produced in the structure is reduced and when stress induced in the member is reduced then it means that your beam or your structural member is good at resisting bending stresses whereas if you produce such a cross-section which has lower moment of inertia it would result in higher stresses which means that it's not good at resisting bending stresses Similarly, polar moment of inertia is known as resistance to twisting. So assume a shaft and apply an external torque about this axis. And this torque causes this shaft to twist. And twisting basically causes shear stresses being produced on the section. So we have torsion equation to calculate shear stresses. And it is equal to tau equals to tc over j let's focus on these two variables so these are your shear stresses 
and this is your polar moment of inertia and we can see here that again as was the case in the bending here shear stress is inversely proportional to polar moment of inertia if you increase j if your cross section is such that you're you have a large amount of j uh, this tends to reduce the shear stress produced in that cross section which means that your section is good at resisting shear which is caused by external torque similarly if you decrease j your shear stresses will increase determine the moment of inertia for the rectangular area shown in the figure with respect to the centroidal x dash axis and the centroidal y dash axis and the polar moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to x dash y dash plane and passing through the centroid so we have to calculate moment of inertia about those axes which are passing through the centroid of this rectangular figure first let's do the calculation of ix dash so a part we need to calculate ix dash the first step in calculating moment of inertia about certain x is to draw a strip parallel to that axis if i want to calculate moment of inertia about x dash axis i am going to create a strip parallel to it and it has a differential length of assuming it equals to dy and let's say that the width of this rectangle is b and the height of this rectangle is h then if i calculate the area of differential element it would be equal to b into dy and we know that the general equation for the moment of inertia about x axis horizontal axis is equal to ix dash is equal to integral of y square da now substitute this da here and you would get y square b dy and what would be the upper limit and lower limit in this case the upper limit is going to be equal to so y here is equal to 0 and here is equal to positive h by 2 and at this bottom extreme end is going to be equal to minus h by 2 so this is going to be minus h by 2 lower limit upper limit is going to be h by 2 and if you solve it so b is constant h by 2 minus h by 2 y square dy and if you integrate it this becomes y cube divided by 3 upper limit is h by 2 lower limit is minus h by 2 and now apply limits to it take out 3 from here so this becomes h by 2 cube minus h by 2 cube h cube divided by 8 plus h cube divided by 8 and b by 3 4 and in the end we get b h cube divided by 12 and that's your answer now the moment of inertia about the centroidal y dash axis first of all we need to create a strip parallel to this axis and this strip has a differential length of dx and this is our da again starting with the calculation of differential area so da here is equal to h dx and we know that moment of inertia about y axis the general formula is equal to integral x square da substitute da here and we obtain 
integral x square h dx and the upper limit and lower limit will be corresponding to x direction since we have a differential length in a horizontal direction so the upper limit is going to be plus p by 2 here and lower limit is going to be minus p by 2 the upper limit becomes positive p by 2 and the lower limit becomes minus p by 2 x square h dx take out h from there integrating it gives us x cubed divided by 3 now applying the limits it becomes and this is your answer so about y dash axis your moment of inertia is coming out to be hp cubed divided by 12 and if you remember about x axis it was equal to bh cubed divided by 12 so if you observe you can see the difference between the two formulas is that if you're calculating moment of inertia about x axis they have cubed the dimension perpendicular to it they have cube h cube whereas when you're trying to determine moment of inertia about y dash axis that is this axis they have cubed the horizontal dimension that is p that is one way to remember these formulas now the last part that is polar moment of inertia okay c part we know that ix is equal to b h cube divided by 12 and i y dash is equal to b h p cube divided by 12 and we have derived the relationship between polar moment of inertia and these moment of inertia and this was and the polar moment of inertia was equal to the summation of two uh, moment of inertia therefore substitute these values b h cube divided by 12 and h p cube divided by 12 and solve it so j is equal to take b h divided by 12 common from both of these terms and inside you will have h square plus b square and that's your answer the moment of inertia about this axis which is perpendicular uh, to the plane x dash y dash and passing through the intersection of these uh, two axes and we are done for this lecture thanks for watching till the end